Jed, do you know where we've brought you today? Well, of course you do. It's the Brunswick Street Oval. This is where the Fitzroy Football Club began their existence and they played here till about 1966. It's in Fitzroy, of course. Fitzroy Football Club and what a fantastic... Jed, Jed, you're more interested in the people playing out there. Look, there's a bloke and a girl having a kick. You just love this place. Oh, yeah. He's a good bloke, this Jed, and he's got to be with us all the way around because the knowledge he has is just incredible. Okay, yes, the Brunswick Street Oval. Well, going back to 1965... I saw Barry Breen's first first game here as an 18-year-old. Everybody knows who Barry Breen is. He kicked the winning point in the 1966 Grand Final. You know that, Jed, and you'll remind me when I forget it. I was over on that po uh, forward pocket over there and uh, came in, you know, got the train here and a tram, and I was about oh, 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 13 years old and had my football record on me and it said had the nice little oval in the middle and the players on it said B. Breen, you know, 18 years old. The ball was just about to bounce and this old Darrow type guy behind me had a big spew and like most of it missed, it did not right on my legs but the bouncing drops all went all over my runners and socks and that sort of put it off put things off for me for the rest of the day I don't even, I, we probably won because we were finished on top of the ladder that year but that was a bit nasty a better time I had was uh, 1966 towards the end of the year in our premiership year we played them here and over in this half forward flank here Big Carl had snotted about three blokes and Alan Jeans was getting a bit upset. We're standing here in front of the Fitzroy Grandstand and uh, very beautiful old National Trust now protected grandstand. They were howling. Big Carl was going crazy. Shortly into the third term, Alan Jeans had had enough. We were going to win by ten goals. He pulled him off so he wouldn't hit and he went, no trial by video in those days. No umpire had got him yet, so we were still safe. We were going on top of the ladder. This is Big Carl. He whipped him off and a few of us grumbled and the Fitzroy, oh, oh they gave him heaps. But it worked because we made the finals and it came unstuck two weeks later in the second semi-final when Big Carl got reported, suspended against Collingwood and he missed the grand final. We won by a point. We would have won by ten goals if he played. Yeah, ten. Jed's telling me eight, but I reckon ten. Over there behind the goals, the Brunswick Street end, you can see those beautiful old double-storey flats there. People used to sit on the balconies there and watch the game for nothing with their cans and the trams that go past uh, three-quarter time out there on the ground. One Tony Ongarello, old player for Fitzroy in the 50s and 60s, he used to smoke his pipe at three-quarter time. Get out his pipe and have a bit of a bit of a puff. Nobody worried about that. There was like paper bags with wine bottles going around. Nobody kids were out kicking at three quarter time. Fantastic, just a fantastic ground. And of course Hayden Bunton. I can't finish about this ground without Hayden Bunton. He won three Brownlow medals here. Like We've got people just walking through, we've got birds flying, they're, they're not even thinking about the three Brownlow medals that Hayden Bunton won on this ground, so there's a great sense of tradition here. 